Leslie O'Neill. I'll tell you why Randall Cunningham was in trouble. He had his tight end, Keith Jackson, tried to escape off the line of scrimmage, and he got downed about three yards away from the line of scrimmage. Randall's looking to go to him, and all of a sudden, your, your tight end is down on the ground. Now watch him. He's working against number 54, Billy Ray Smith. And right there, he saw him go down. And remember, he's got that bad ankle. And as a result, Randall has to pull out and look for somebody else downfield or try to run the football, and that's what he does. And Leslie O'Neill makes the stop. It'll be second down and 12. Okay. to the 40-yard line. Finally, Gary Plummer makes the tackle. Burt Grossman, number 92 for the Chargers, has to be wondering when he's going to get his sack on Randall Cunningham. He's seen him a lot, but he just can't visualize him. Watch number 92, and he's playing against the Matt Darwin there, number 78 for the Eagles, and flushes Randall out of that pocket. Randall, this is what he does exceptionally well, faking out that defense up there. But see, when the defense is in that, that zone coverage, it makes it very difficult for the quarterback to find those open areas, like, excuse me, when they're man-to-man -man coverage. Puts the ball out, lunges full with that one hand, still short of the first down. It's a 10-yard gain. It'll be third and two. Fire. Has the first down and then some. thing good running backs will do is they'll look for a little cutback, look for that daylight. Keith Byers finds it over on the left side of his offensive line. Good down blocking there by, by uh, Darwin, number 78. And that allows Byers to slide through in that back side. You saw him just kind of slide through there. Drummond had a nice block at the point of attack. If there has been one player that has really been a surprise today for the Eagles, it's Ben Drummond. Eight carries, 60 yards running, four catches, 60 yards catching, 120 yards total offense. First down for Cunningham, incomplete, intended for Byers. And Randall Cunningham talked to us about his offense getting out of rhythm a little bit because they've been running the football so much, where he's used to throwing the football. One of the other ways that it shows up is if you start getting a lot of pressure in your quarterback because all of a sudden your offensive linemen are dropping back and becoming somewhat passive because they're doing a lot of pass blocking instead of being aggressive and firing out on people. Raiders score. Bo Jackson has a couple of touchdowns. 92 yard run for one. Bo knows football. Second down and 10 at the 47. Nothing for Byers this time unless he makes it himself and he pushes forward. But Lee Williams made the stop and the ball will be marked at the 48. Leslie O'Neill, good pressure up the field. Oh, this guy is going to go to a Pro Bowl, Tim because what he does is he disrupts an offense because he's got so much speed coming off the line of scrimmage. If you're relying on a running back to block him because he is considered an outside linebacker, he was a defensive end. If you want that, uh, that running back to block him, he's got to bring a load to stop this guy. He's 6'5 and a half, 260 pounds at outside linebacker. Former defensive end, had a knee injury in 1986, defensive rookie of the year. And with the four downs, he'll go down as a defensive end as he does now. Out of the shotgun on third and eight. Look out. Cunningham to the 40. Billy Ray Smith makes the tackle, but a big gain by Randall Cunningham. 11-yard pickup. You know, and you always talk about coaches not wanting their quarterbacks to run, but what it does is it really puts the defense in a sweat because they know if the quarterback who can run as well as any running back you've got on the team can get loose, then it makes no difference what way they cover downfield because he's still going to gain the necessary yardage. So Randall Cunningham is one of those guys that puts defenses in sweats. Roman loses two. Again, it's Billy Ray Smith and big number 91, Leslie O'Neill. Let's take you back to New York and Brent Musburger. Tim, here's a moment that Philadelphia Eagle fans are going to enjoy. Pogaboom on the quarterback draw has scored for Phoenix early in the second half. They close in on the Giants now, trailing by four. We'll keep you up to date. Let's send you back to Tim. All right, Brent. Here we're tied at seven, and we are watching that score closely because all the folks in Philadelphia are interested. Loss of one on the last play. It'll be second down and 11 on the San Diego 41. Blitz is coming. 
Was it complete? No. They say he was out of bounds. They'll talk about whether he would come back inbounds if he hadn't been hit, and they think not. Jim Collins wrote him out, but that pass was really thrown well considering the pressure that Cunningham was under. Well, certainly the Chargers expressed us that they were going to try to put some pressure on Randall Cunningham, force him into some bad decisions. Here he makes a nice pass, but Drummond is just not in the position to make the catch and stay in bounds. Good pressure, though, on Randall Cunningham. Forced that play to be thrown a little bit early. Forced the ball to be thrown a little early. You see Lee Williams, number 99. He's coming in on a pass rush. 55 Collins is in there as well from his linebacking position. Third down and 11 at the 41. Pressure again. This time Cunningham cannot escape. Third sack of the day and Bert, for San Diego. And Burt Grossman, number 92, finally gets his sack. Something he's been looking for all day. Good effort there. Throws off the offensive line and it comes in and traps Randall Cunningham. The key, though, is they're collapsing the pocket up the middle and then closing in the sides, giving Randall nowhere to run. Grossman's fourth sack of the year. Telchik to punt. And Wayne Walker will be deep, standing at his own 10. Good punt by Telchik. Walker's had trouble with one or two of them. There's a flag, and they're going to be... I believe they'll call interference against Philadelphia because Walker had called for the fair catch, and he's got every right to follow the ball. I think it was William Frizzell, 33, that ran into him. This is going to be a conference call here. Larry Nemers, the line judge, talking with Dick Jorgensen. Now the group of them come together. <laughs> I well, don't the think there was any question about it. His hand was up. He called for a legal fair catch high above his head, waved it back and forth. Do you see Walker with his hand up in the air, clearly calling for the fair catch. He's moving up forward. And the question will be, was he I'm sure, whether or not Frizzell was blocked into Walker. That was Martin Bayless, number 44. Here's another peek at it. Now watch as uh, you see Frizzell come down. He is, indeed is pushed by uh, Bayless, I believe that is. Pushes him into the uh, receiver. The kicking team player was pushed into the receiver. The ball hit him on the shoulder, went upfield about 12 yards. It's going to be the receiving team's ball. First down, no foul. And thank you for that play-by-play. -play. <laughs> so now that we have all the business straight, Chargers get a break, I guess. Yeah, they do. They, they kind of dodge a bullet there. But when you look at it, though, the Eagles kind of dodge a bullet, too, because the Frizzell had been called for that. Uh, interference is 15 yards, and uh, certainly the Charger offense would have taken the penalty. Nine minutes and 18 seconds remain in the third period, and we're still tied. Image today. Here he is again. Still on his feet to the 47-yard line, and you know, 248-pound running back. That seems to be vogue now in the NFL when you think of Christian Okoye and Ironhead Hayward. Marion Butts is 248 pounds. And up front, he's got an offensive line that averages about 6'5 and a half and over 300 pounds. So you add that all up, and that means maybe the Chargers should be running that ball a little bit up front. If their guys are healthy and feel pretty good up, up front, let's load that ball up and uh, hand it off to Marion Butts and see what he can do with it. Well, you're right. It is the heaviest offensive line in pro football, yet San Diego ranks 26th in total offense. Second down and four. Play action. Going deep. Wide open is Caravello. To the 10-yard line. one of those guys that used to be an offensive lineman too as big as he is now you see Jim McMahon going here to that play action the key though is you see the linebacker stayed up close to the